Okay, so we're recording. Um, hi, Rebecca. Thank hey, you. Eva. I'm going to take a second to introduce myself because not everybody knows who I am or what I do, and then we're going to dive in and I'm going to pick your brain. So uh, you are not yeah. everyone knows who I am. Don't <laughs> sound so <surprised. laughs> um, so it'll be, it's kind of weird for me because you know who I am and I'm only speaking to you right now, but for those watching the video, I'm Eva Lurie. I'm a mother of four kids. I'm a psychologist and I'm the creator of a project called Motherhood in the Making. And I help moms reconnect with themselves so that they can enjoy life and raise kids um, who thrive. And they can enjoy that process. Um, I run a Facebook group, an amazing, amazing community, the uh, Motherhood in the Making community. And um, I run workshops and um, help moms individually. And this project, Expert Interviews, I've started because I've encountered so many amazing women um, in my travels, women who serve um, the female population and who are passionate about assisting women in their personal development and their growth. Um, um, and Rebecca, you are one of those women. I, I know you from around our, um, where we live. Um, yeah. I know you on Facebook. I took um, that like years ago. Yeah, you took a headshot. Yeah, so if you go I to my, for that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You get, you get street cred there. Yeah, you did my headshot. Um, so if you go to my business page on Facebook, that's my stunning headshot. And I use it for Google. I use it for everything, <laughs> actually, because it's so nice. Um, someone actually sent me a message, Rebecca, and they're like, it was a man. But anyways, <laughs> very inappropriate. Uh, <laughs> he, said, he said, I just want you to know that your profile picture does not look anything like you. <laughs> wow. And I ignored that. I don't know if I responded. I don't, I don't think I gave him. Anyways, but anyways, it's a beautiful um, picture. You are very talented. And I just learned that photography is something that you picked up when you made Aliyah, when you immigrated to Israel. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I saw that interview that you did. And that news interview. And I was just like, what? This is yeah. something that you've taken to so naturally that you have such a talent for. I was so surprised. Yeah. Tell me more. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I made Alia when I was really young. So I was, I was 20 years old. My husband and I, we got married when we were 19. I was 19 and he was 20. Wow. And kind of came with our backpacks on our back, no furniture, no lift, <laughs> and we made Alia to spot. And um, we worked in the art galleries. We we're both like very creative people. Um, I thought maybe I'd go into like fashion um, um, or like interior design or something like that. He wasn't exactly sure what he wanted to do. Um, and we had our whole lives ahead of us. We still do, thank God. Um, and and uh, he, like with our wedding money, he bought a SLR, a, a professional camera and started playing around a bit. And he really, like, it also was very natural for him and he's a very technical person. So he understood like all the ways that the camera works and he just really got into it. And um, as he got into it, then I started styling his shoots for him and doing the business end of things. And uh, shortly after he started, I was like, I kind of want to, I want to photograph too. So I went to a wedding with him that he was photographing and I was a third shooter, which we usually have two. And I just shot. And from that moment on, I was like, this is what I want to do. And I felt really connected to it. Um, and yeah, like, thank God, I really felt like it was something that came very naturally to me. There were definitely things that like I had to learn along the way, like technical things, um, but, but yeah, it's, photography is very intuitive for me. Uh, and, and then we both are self-taught obviously. So after, um, taking courses online and things like that, I came across boudoir photography and really connected to the idea of it. Um, I love the artistic element of it and I just kind of dove right in. And I did not know how passionate or how I would be about it or how meaningful it would be to me. Uh, but it, it was pretty evident after just a couple of sessions, how, so how much- you pick up a camera. What? In terms of, you, so you pick up a camera and you just sort of went with this, which I really admire. Like, hey, I want to give this a try. 
because so often, I mean, for me, I've been very hesitant with expressing myself creatively. Um, right. I'm not the creative one. My sisters are the creative ones. They're like, oh, that's not for me. You know, <laughs> like right. there's a, there's something, I believe there's something um, very um, personal about expressing ourselves creatively. Um, something, it might, it's less, um, it's, it's like, um, I'm not sure if it's not tangible or if it's at a deep level, but it's something, there's something more vulnerable about expressing ourselves creatively for, for some, maybe not for others. Um, yeah. And so I really yeah. admire that it's just like, I want to try that. Photography is very vulnerable. It's like very personal, like yeah. personal to the photographer. Like, you know, it's, it's hard because there's so many pictures out there and like people can be, um, especially when you're starting out and you care so much about the feedback and what other people think, when you put out a picture, it's kind of like a piece of you. So when you get criticism or um, you don't get positive feedback, it can, it can be very hurtful at first. And then as the years go on, you become more confident in yourself and your own self-expression. Um, and that doesn't bother you as much, mm. but, but yeah, it's very, it's very vulnerable. How did you manage that criticism? Um, how did I manage that criticism? How did you grow from it as opposed to letting it um, get in your way of proceeding and, and you know, moving forward? I think from, I think I just really tried to focus on the business end of things and wanting to make my clients happy. So like every single wedding job we would have or boudoir job I would have, I would kind of, go into the psychology of what my client wants and what my client needs. And now um, when I do boudoir sessions, I do a full consultation beforehand. And I've kind of, um, I've kind of narrowed it down to the questions that I know I need to ask in order to provide the best service for them so that they're going to be happy in the end. And also just to be very clear about like, about who I am and what I do. I think it, it Criticism, anything negative helped form my structure for my business and what I want to be putting out to the world and um, just being clear about who I am and what I offer and uh, being confident in that. Right. So. Right. right. I think that there's this interesting parallel between this vulnerability as a photographer and, and growing into my passion and talent as a photographer, there's this beautiful parallel between the subjects of your photography, it's particularly in boudoir. For those who are watching, you're known as a boudoir photographer here. Boudoir is. What's that? Can we say what boudoir is? So we will come, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. that. <laughs> but, it's, uh, but, it's, but it's beautiful to think how, um, I wonder if I can grab that thought back. Um, this parallel, this, this vulnerability um, and this growth through the criticism because in, in the boudoir, because um, it, women are not uh, um, dressed or they're, or they're barely dressed, um, I want to say they're scantily dressed because just because I like that word, <laughs> scantily clad, um, that they are, they are vulnerable. And so there's this, there's this real nurturance and this real understanding that I think that it shows in the way that you approach your job with the real compassion and understanding and just even as you said like these questions that I ask I really want to support you because I know the vulnerability I understand this vulnerability as as you go through this process and you grow from this process because it really is a growth process so right. taking a step back tell us what boudoir is uh, boudoir is intimate photography for women and intimate by intimate I mean lingerie artistic nudity um, this is for everyday women, not models. Um, well, it could be models too, but any, any woman ages 21, I think my oldest client was 69. Mm -hmm. uh, we could go above that. You wrote and a blog about that woman, right? What? The 69 year old? This, you wrote what about a blog? No, actually. Um, I did blog about a 60 year old, but recently I had a 69 year old. She was awesome. And, um, and uh, so women at all different stages of their life, pregnant, um, going through, you know, 
great things and wanting to celebrate milestones in their life or going through struggles and illnesses and different difficulties with relationships um, and wanting to kind of delve into themselves and connect with their bodies. Um, so I see it as intimate and empowering photography for women. Wow. And, and yeah, it's, it's amazing. I have so many questions. <laughs> yeah. so many questions. Like um, and you know, I think this, I think I may represent a lot of the questions that women have who learn about your service and, you know, I understand, I understand on the surface because I see the photos in the group that you run. They're stunning. They're really stunning. Yeah. Um, um, and there's something when you see these photos often, and I imagine that this is that I represent the reaction to a lot of women like, oh my God, oh my God, like you took that photo. Um, but I understand that it's, a, as you said, it's a very healing, empowering experience for women. What so you, what by your reaction? So I think a lot of women, their hesitance, their resistance to it is because of their discomfort with nudity, yeah. their own nudity, their own body image, their own sexuality and sexuality in general, which we can, we'll discuss, I hope about sexuality and, and how it is. A, it's a, such a deep expression of who we really are and our deepest vulnerabilities. Um, oh, I'm just thinking of Freud now. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the Oedipal conflict right. now. Um, it goes so deep. Um, and, um, and just, and, and, um, modesty and our beliefs around modesty and how it ties into religion and, and faith right. and how things are all intertwined. Um, and so on the outside, um, you know, people have these, so what happens, so what happens for, to, for the observer, the objective observer who sees these photos and they have their internal reactions to it and their own, their intrigue, their resistance, their fear. I mean, they're having an emotional reaction to it. Um, yes. And then there's that on the outside. And then from the inside, like, I'm always curious, like what's happening behind that photo? Like what's happening there? I'm always, like, I see these photos and I'm just like, what's happening for this woman? What is she experiencing? And, what's Rebecca witnessing here? Like, what do, what do I witness when I photograph these women in this vulnerable and empowering state? <laughs> uh -huh. Uh, so I try to let it, I mean, everything is what you bring to it. So a woman can come to a session wanting to be open and wanting to be vulnerable and it to be like a deep, meaningful experience. Um, and a lot of times when there is that initial trust with me and the client, then we're able to just like go for it. Um, and then there's other people who want sexy pictures and they're not necessarily, they don't think that they're looking for the meaningful or the deeper aspects of boudoir photography. And sometimes, that's, that's what they need. And then other times it becomes something that is much deeper than that they would have ever thought, um, mm -hmm. which I, I always find that to be really beautiful and really interesting how that authentically unfolds. Um, I, every story is so different. So I don't really have a blanket answer to that question, but, but between me getting to know my client and uh, really like not to toot my own horn but I really put my own like heart and soul into every single session in order to kind of tell the stories of whatever emotions they're going through at the time um, and go whatever they're going through and also what they want to achieve so like maybe they're in a hard place and we want to show that but also to show like that even through that struggle that there is beauty and there is happiness and there is light. Um, and to have those, those pictures side by side sometimes can be really healing. I know that for my own session uh, that I did, I think four years ago now, I mean, I've done a couple of them, but I did a session four years ago now. And I remember it was just a really, really hard time. And when I look at, back at those pictures, it looks so beautiful. And for me, it's just a reminder that, and it's not just, you know, it's not fake beautiful. It's not just like, oh, I put on a ton of makeup and like we hid all of my emotions. It was like a real genuinely beautiful session. And for me, that's a reminder that there is always beauty in the darkness. There's always something 
to hold on to. And, um, and I hope that when my clients look back on their pictures, that they, they do see that positivity and that love that is either there or available to them. What was it like? And that's interesting that you were the subject of a shoot. So you yeah. lived through, like you've experienced it yourself. It's interesting. I think myself like, yeah, I go to therapy. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm a therapist who goes to therapy, sure. And it yeah. helps. Um, I also so, go to therapy. <laughs> yeah. um, um, what, what, what was, when you say it's beautiful, right? What was, what was beautiful about it for you? How, what was the beauty? I think being able to see myself so present and um, really connected with myself. And it was, it was also like I was still breastfeeding and I hadn't reconnected with my body or my like sexuality really. And I remember that there was just one picture of me um, from the back side, it was like from my feet to my head, completely nude. And I never had seen a picture of myself like that before. And I was like, wow, I look so beautiful and just the light on my body. And I mean, obviously artistically beautiful, but it was, I mean, that, that's what I hope to, to do for other people is really be able to take a step outside ourselves and see ourselves from more of a subjective place because a lot of times like we look at ourselves in the mirror and we actually see a distorted view of what we what mm -hmm. we look like. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was just a catalyst for me in being able to um, start to reconnect my body and my sexuality again. Um, but also that even that experience in itself, not even the pictures, that experience of kind of like just focusing on myself, being present, almost like a meditative spiritual experience. And then seeing that in the photos was amazing. Wow. So I look at this photo of me head to toe, bare from the back, and I think, wow, I'm beautiful. What feelings come up for me? Like, what do I experience in my body? What feelings? The first thing I thought was like a little bit of sadness because it's like, why didn't I see this before? Mm. You know, mm. why, am, why was I not appreciating this before? But then gratitude mm. and excitement and self-confidence mm. and um, and all of those, th all of those positive things that come up, they really wanted, they really made me want to take care of myself more because mm -hmm. like, if I'm feeling this crappy right now and I look this beautiful, like I really need to take care of myself mm -hmm. and I will feel so much better and I will look better and um, live, you know, the life that I want to live. And, and it wasn't for anyone else. It wasn't like, you know, that, that moment that I had looking at that picture wasn't, wasn't something that was like a validation from my husband or my friends. It was really an inner experience, which, um, I think is important to have. It sounds like you had a shift in your perception. Yeah. It can shift of your perception of yourself as beautiful and lovable. Yeah. And I think it was especially hard for me because I got married so young and I became religious very fast. And I started like wearing very snoot clothing right away and covering my hair and like taking on things faster than I could handle it. And then I disconnected from this like materialistic part of me that was still important. Mm -hmm. um, and this was like, I think I even put a picture of me like getting my hair and makeup done and my sister commented on the picture. She said, that's the Becca I know. And I was like, right. it was 
it wasn't, it wasn't offensive to me. I was like, okay, I'm like reconnecting to the side of myself that, you know, I'm, I'm 22 years old. Like, I don't, I don't need to let myself go. I don't want to let myself go. I want to take care of myself. I want to feel beautiful and I want to feel strong and healthy. And, you know, those are things that are important to me. It's a mistake. So I just feeling anyone in who's watching this in case they're not familiar that often um, there's, there, I feel like in our generation, um, <laughs> particularly there's like in, in Judaism, people as in any faith become more or less observant and you're talking about a time in your life where you became more observant and you adopted observant customs, such as um, um, modesty. Um, so you're covering your elbows and wearing long skirts or covering your knees with skirts. Maybe you're wearing stockings and not you, but in general, women are covering up their bodies. And the idea is that we are precious jewels and that we should be, and that we should be covered in, and um, out, of a, out of an act of self-respect. But unfortunately, when you throw in um, society's perception of women, um, and we won't go down, we won't talk religiously, but <laughs> in the religious communities, but let's the say socially you know, in Western society and, and not Western, but the world, um, um, the objectification of women, that it's misconstrued as an act of shame. That I'm ashamed of my body and so I'm going to cover it up. There's something wrong with my body or I need to protect men from my beauty. I need to protect men from my sexuality or perhaps I somehow feel vulnerable about my sexuality and my sexuality scares me and my sexual power scares me and so I'm going to cover it up. And so in many ways, especially if you, if you, um, um, how do you say do chuva in English? Um, yes. Yes. I know, but I don't know if that's really, <laughs> I don't know that's that's not, if you become more observant, if you become more observant yeah. and you've got more um, um, observant customs, then um, unfortunately a lot of, a lot of, I'm going to say women, men as well, but we're speaking to women here, they um, are actually not becoming closer to themselves, but they're cutting themselves off of themselves. They're disconnecting from themselves. Right. And, and I think it's not like, I think it's <laughs> the women, I think that like cultural Judaism has become, you know, not exactly something that um, facilitates that kind of empowerment through Sneut. But, but that's just my own personal opinion. And I think that, and I think that some people do feel really amazing, empowered, and they do feel like that special jewel. And that's so amazing, incredible. But I think that like a lot of the culture lends to those other negative feelings that you were just mentioning. Yeah, yeah. So this, for you, your experience in your own boudoir session was reconnecting to your um, beauty and to your sexuality and, and to yourself. The parts of yourself that you had disconnected from um, because you had adopted a lifestyle that restricted these expressions. Right. Yeah. Right. Wow, that is beautiful. That's <laughs> powerful. Yeah. It tells me very I don't powerful. think I've ever told that story publicly. Yeah. So I basically, I look at my, this image and I see myself and I see a part of myself that I had forgotten about or that I had disconnected from, that I had, um, that's amazing. And so then what happens? And then you live your life. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because, you know, I, I always am the first one to say, like, you know, a boudoir session can be incredibly meaningful. I've had people who said that it changes their life, but it's not, but that's not how I sell it. I don't say, do this boudoir session, it's going to change your life. I think it's, you know, just like any kind of self-care um, practices, I think it's just one step along the road, whether it's therapy or meditation or you know, boudoir session, whatever, whatever it is that helps you connect with your, yourself. Um, that doesn't mean that it's automatically life changing and that now I love my body every day. Um, but I think that it's a, it's a enormous step mm -hmm. in, in trying to understand ourselves better and, um, and having fun and giving time for yourself. Yeah, right. Which is, is very difficult for a lot, a lot of women. Yes, yes. 
So this, so a boudoir session in some ways is a catalyst for the conversation. And for some ways it's part of the conversation in that we are beginning to just on the journey of connecting with ourselves. It's part of, this is like a stop on the journey of re-encountering ourselves and our deepest selves and our truest selves and, this, and the lovable self, part of, parts of ourselves that have for some reason um, gone into hiding or we've, we, for whatever reason, cut ourselves off from. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't tell you how many women come back to me and say, I can't believe that's me. I just, honestly, I can't believe that's me. And I'm so happy that I could show them that. And I'm like, and at the same time, I'm like, but that is you. Like, that's you. And I hope that they are, are able, able to take a small piece of however I saw them in the images and carry it with them. And I mean, they do have the images or an album or however, however they'd like to um, keep them. And I think it is something really beautiful to go back to. And like, ideally, I think it's really cool to do boudoir sessions at different points in our lives. Like I've seen, I've done maternity sessions, which are really special and they are a little bit different. Um, uh, when we're younger, when we're middle aged, when we're older, like it kind of, it's very therapeutic. And I'm, I'm waiting for my next boudoir session because I've gone through an emotional like transformation in the last year and I kind of want to see what kind of sexuality is expressed in my boudoir session. Um, and I think it says a lot and it's very therapeutic. So. Wow. And I, <laughs> What's that? And What's I that? want my makeup done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I knew last <lingerie. laughs> Oh my gosh. I'm trying to imagine what it would be like. And I imagine a lot of women are scared. And you, yeah. do, you mentioned that, you know, I ask, I, you know, there are questions that I ask, which I'm curious to know what they are, or some of them, and um, just out of curiosity. And, you know, with the intention of developing our relationship and our rapport and, and my subject's sense of trust and safety, um, and also so that I can capture what they would like to capture. Um, but it's scary. Like, even... I think there's, some, there's something very important about developing that rapport, and I'm sure that really helps. You know, that would really help that I feel like, okay, you get me, and right. it's safe, and I feel okay, and we're gonna, I'm not, you know, and I'm, I'm in good hands. But it's scary, so how, what, do you, what can you say to me, or a woman watching, who's like, yeah, that sounds, I mean, it sounds amazing, it sounds incredible, but I'm just so scared, like, I'm really scared. Yeah. Um... What do you say? So I usually try to, I think that like when people are scared, it's because it, it's unknown to them. That's what fear is, right? So I want to, I'll go through every step of the process with them, exactly what I do. Um, a lot of times I'll show them testimonials of other clients that uh, were scared and went through the process and were very happy that they did and kind of the revelations that they had from their session. Um, and I'd say that, 95% of my clients that are walking into a session are scared and a lot and even when people say that they are in touch with their bodies and they are they are, feel very sexual and they feel very beautiful it's very different to feel that way in the bedroom and then be in front of a camera it's they're two completely separate things um What's so the difference? I, well, first of all, like just from a first photographic perspective, there's things that can be so sexy that you do like intimately that just don't translate on the camera. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> or biting your lip or like whatever it might be. Like sometimes it's flattering, sometimes it's not. Um, but, but so I really pose my clients from head to toe. Like I, I, I um, basically, I'll let them fall into their own kind of natural pose. And then I'll say, is it okay if I touch you? And then I'll move their hand, I'll move their hair, I'll move their feet. I'll get on the bed with them and show them exactly what to do. Um, 
So I think really going through every step of the process and them knowing that they don't have to come and like be a model or be anyone that they're not, I think really helps ease their mind. And then I talk to them and then they sometimes send me pictures of inspiration of things that they're in, that they like. Um, then we do that consultation and then on the day of a lot of clients choose to get their hair and makeup done and that's like an hour and a half to two hours and like if it in my studio i put coffee out i put like healthy nosh out i um i sit with them i put music on and it's just like a girly fun time so i think that I see a huge transformation by the moment that they walk in when we kind of give each other an awkward hug and I'm like, Hey, how are you? To like, they sit in the chair, they get something to drink and eat. We talk, we learn about their life, learn about, you know, why they're like even deeper, why they're doing their boudoir session. Um, and then they see themselves in the mirror, which is always really fun. And I think from at that point, usually they like, you know, felt a lot more comfortable with us and then gained the confidence of like getting their hair and makeup done, knowing that they like how they look and, um, and then going for it. But it is a leap of faith. Yeah. It is. It, there's nothing I can, you know, say to totally ease someone's fears, but, um, but I've never had a boudoir session flat. Everyone is so beautiful. Everyone really is. <laughs> Everyone really is. And you know, it reminds me actually, as you speak, I'm, like, I'm thinking, you know, it's not much different than therapy. You know, as a therapist and I speak to people, there's that fear about what's going to happen and what am I going to discover about myself? And am I going to be okay with what I discover? Um, and it is definitely a leap of faith. And as you're speaking, I'm thinking, that women's, women's reactions to hearing this, I mean, my reaction is, uh, I mean, I'm having, I'm having a different reaction, but I can imagine women thinking, um, oh, I don't deserve this. Like, I don't deserve that. Like, that's too much. That's too much. Or subconsciously feeling like they don't deserve it, but yes. not actually saying it. Right. That's right. That's right. Um, I think just, you know, similar to the, to the workshop I'm running, like, just... I had interviewed someone this morning, a participant who very kindly agreed to um, um, answer some of my questions just to let other women know about what it's like to make the decision to join. And um, you can see the link in the group. <laughs> and um, and uh, I lost my train of thought. She was talking about, um, I can't remember what I was saying about deserving to do it, about, um, I can't remember why I brought her up as an example. I lost my train of thought. I watch these interviews all the time and people do this all the time, so I don't feel bad about this. <laughs> no. Not one bit. Um, in any case. Real life. <laughs> yeah, in any case, when we watch the video, I'll be like, come on, Lima, come on. <laughs> in any case, why did I bring her up? I brought her up probably because she was talking about um, um, investing in herself. And, um, oh, I know why, because she was saying, just by choosing to do it, just by choosing to invest in myself, that in and of itself was so life-changing. Just saying, I'm worth it. And then she continues to say, I, you know, there's a handy, a, handy, a handy course that's been offered. And she said, she's put it off. And she finally said, I'm doing that too. And just saying, oh, I'm gonna do it is in and of itself so therapeutic. Like I deserve it. And I think it's that leap you know, people speak to me and like this morning, I was saying, oh, I've wanted to do therapy for so long, but I'm going to do it. You know, like I'm yeah. finally going to do it. And it's just making that decision to right. say, yeah, I'm worth it. I'm worth, I'm, I'm worth it. And there's, there's one thing of like, also therapy is a lot of hard work. So that's like another element of it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. For sure. And, and I think that this, I think what you offer, um, is, such it's a nice way of encountering a therapeutic experience without the i think i think you do hit a death i think you do hit a death um i don't i don't i don't know if everyone is so very conscious of what they hit but they hit it right and therapy is more of bringing your consciousness to your experience and that is hard work um right. it's long you know can be long term but i think that this experience 
is like, it's such a powerful, intensive, so to speak, right. um, where you get to encounter yourself in a very deep way. And, and I think, and the effects of it are so much greater than you can ever anticipate. And I think that the, the irony is that's what scares us. So yeah. it's the paradox of what scares me, it, what pushes me away is actually what I'm going to benefit from. It's and it, so it really is a sleep of faith. It really is. And the faith is in you as a photographer. And I think what's so healing and so empowering is like this faith in myself that whatever comes up, I'll be able to t handle it and I'll be, and I'm ready to experience myself. Right. I think that's amazing. And then you were talking about, you talk a lot about self-love. You talk, you know, and even in your own experience, you're speaking about looking at this photo of myself. I encounter this love for myself that I had disconnected from of my looking at my body. I was able to connect through my body to my inner self and through this experience. Right. So I want to hear more What's that? It's a vessel. Yeah. That's Did what I, I want to hear about yeah. self love. And I want to talk about the book. Like I want to hear your take on the body as our experience taking these uh, artistic nude photos. Um, and yet it's a, it's a means to connect with our inner selves. Tell um, me about, you know, about your thoughts on that. Well, I actually just did this Yoma Hava workshop, which Valentine's Day is in February, but we did it in the beginning of January so that the, um, the women who participated could have their pictures in time for Valentine's Day if they wanted to give it to, you know, themselves or their significant others. And it was a two-part uh, workshop. The first night we, um, we all met, I think there's about 12 women, and we did a life coaching session. Um, the life coach's name was Jamie Faye, and she's based in Tel Aviv. And it was, it, her and I talked a lot about what I wanted to accomplish during that session. Uh, and it was all based around um, understanding our our own body image, what it is now, and like kind of cultivating it to something that could be more positive and how we want to express that in our boudoir session. We did like, you know, the, the hippie like dancing and like candles and all this crazy stuff that I actually never thought that I could like get into. I love meditation and I love yoga and like stuff like that. But like, it was like definitely certain things like that took me out of my comfort zone. But at the same time, I felt comfortable with it. So that was cool to see. Um, and we filled out this whole worksheet about um, our empowering beliefs about our body, our disempowering beliefs about our body, and um, where that came from, and really had like a beautiful connecting uh, workshop. And it was great to be able to like, you know, share a little bit with the group and also have like this internal process of our own. And we all walked away with a mantra, which is still on my fridge right now. Um, and my mantra, and it was based on how we feel we're like masculine and feminine and the things that we feel we're masculine in and things we feel like we're feminine is in. And then we put together this like beautiful mantra. And mine was that my body is connected to strength and life. And sounds so simple, but it's been on my fridge and I look at it every single day and I take a deep breath and I actually feel that connection. And that's just, you know, that's just a tiny aspect of what it could be like to, you know, go through this body image process and have a boudoir session, but just to have this mantra that, you know, you keep with you and that you continually, you know, let it let it ruminate in your head um, for as long as you need and um it can help you it really helps you you know what's then, amazing so that, is like this i read this mantra i want to like i want to add in my like this is what's happening yeah. i read this mantra and i have an emotional reaction and yeah this emotional reaction is positive and it motivates po positivity and we are wired to continue to pursue um, things that um, uh, bring us pleasure. And we don't do things that don't bring us pleasure. Like that's why I don't put my hand on the hot stove. <laughs> and that's how 
It's like a, yeah. it's, it's how we're wired to survive in the world. And we have this emotional, I have this emotional experience and it feels good. So I keep doing it. And the more I do it, I wire this positivity. Like I'm rewiring this, like, I don't know how you say, like, yeah. as you're like doing it, you're rewiring your brain and your perception yeah. and your emotional association with your body and with not just your body, yourself. Because like right. you said, our body is a vessel. But it really is a, I see it in the way I, I work with the body, is that on a spiritual level, it's a vessel. And it's physically, it's, um, it's an avenue to our deeper selves. Like if you go through your, like when you think of the image that you saw, see, like the image that I see of myself from behind, in, you know, the product of my boudoir session, head to toe, with the light just right. And I look at it and I think, wow, that's I'm beautiful. I have this visceral somatic experience in my body. And when I connect with my body on that, I connect with something very deep in myself, this deep emotional um, um, experience. And it's in my body, which is so deep. Like it's in my body. This emotion is in my body and I connect with it. And it's even beyond words. And what people usually do when I ask them to connect with their emotions is they go into their head and they try to describe it verbally. But it's, it's really not even in thought. It's not even in language. It's something so deep in ourselves. It's so deep in our body. It connects us with who we really are. Is it like, like, I, I don't even tell I'm really excited about this. <laughs> How so our, beautiful. This is so beautiful. Our bodies are like this, they are a gateway to who we really are. And I think that's why I'm so intrigued by your work. And um, I will get behind, I will get in front of your camera, Rebecca. I will get there. <laughs> I, feel, I feel teary thinking about it. Like I will get there. Um, and I think that it is, it, I imagine it to be an incredibly powerful experience, even if it's subtle, even, you know, yeah. you describe some women who like we're buds and we have this really very easygoing relationship. So it's not scary or it's like less scary. And it's like, you know, um, they're, they appear to be more comfortable as opposed to someone like you, Liba, who's been hesitating for years about, you know, doing this and you've been interested Which in are, this. That's a lot of people, by the way, I'll get emails yes. that say, I've been following you for years. Yeah. I'm finally ready to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I say this because I want to represent the women, anyone who I interview, I represent the women who are following you and I speak to them. I speak for them. And I, you know, um, and I want to have the conversation that they would want to have with you. And it's something I want to do for so long. And I, I'm scared of it because I can see just how powerful it will be. However, when I think of how powerful and how, as you described, as beautiful it can be, um, it's so encouraging. It's so inspiring. Right. It's really inspiring. As I, as I speak to you now, I'm like, I have this, like, excitement in my body. Like, it's like the excitement. Like, my heart's racing. And it's like, you, get, you learn something new. Like, when you learn something new you've never known before or you're getting ready to do something new. Like, wow. And I realize, as I think about it, I'm like, yeah, it's me. Like it's, 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 you encounter yourself. Like there's this potential to encounter a part of yourself and it's a beautiful part of yourself. And I think there's so many parts of ourselves that we're used to hating and criticizing um, and nitpicking. I, or not paying attention to. Or not paying attention to, exactly. Um, that we don't, um, I personally, don't have issues with my body. I don't have, I don't, I've always loved my body. My sexuality is something different, much more vulnerable. My external outside body, I've never had a problem with, um, although I know many women do speak about that. Oh, I'm not beautiful or, oh, I'm not. Um, but nevertheless, it's still confronting because however you do it, like whatever angle you're going to take it from, it is a scary venture. And because at the end of the day, what we're re you're, you're photo, you're f photographing, the body, but really the experience is internal. And I think yeah. that's very powerful. I, I, I'd like to know your thoughts about that. that it's the, the images of your external body and it is beautiful. I mean, it is, your photography is beautiful. And um, when I say beautiful, it's because it invokes emotion in me. It invokes that, that, that when your breath is taken away, when you're by the Grand Canyon or you're like staring at a huge waterfall in South America, like, that's also how I see beauty. It's, it's, uh, when I say beautiful, I, there's many layers of depth. Yeah. It's yeah. like, oh, that's just aesthetically pleasing. Like, right. I think art makes you feel. 
Exactly. Yes, I agree. And, and when I look at your photography, I think I feel, and it's an interesting experience to look at a nude figure. It's so objectifying, but let's say it, a nude figure, um, a woman who's posing nude, um, or, um, or in lingerie, nearly nude. And, and yet you capture something emotional and something so deep. What do you think? Yeah. What's that for you when I say that? No, it's, I, I just, I was thinking about like, you know, kind of the stigma of like nude photography, like even growing up, it's like, oh my gosh, she posed nude. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I would never want those pictures out there. Or like you think about Playboy and you think about all these different, you know, even going further into like pornography and things like that. Um, and it's like this, like, like almost like, no, that's not, that's not me. That's not what I want to do. And obviously I offer something completely different, but I think a lot of times that's maybe someone's like initial reaction. Like I'm not going to pose nude. Like I'm not going to be in Playboy that I would never do that. Um, and I think that the difference between um, what I do and you know other forms of nude photography is that like my purpose is to empower a woman to feel good about herself like not only on the outside but also like we've been speaking about on the inside um and i'd like to think that my style is um is beautiful in a way that celebrates the woman form femininity sexuality and um and um it's not objectifying it's it's a it's a celebration mm. it's subjectifying not objectifying it's subjectifying <laughs> meaning you, you it's as if i might have made that up it's like uh, through the experience i become the subject i'm not an object anymore but i'm the subject i look at myself right. and i am the subject i am the i the capital i because right. uh, i'm not like not like handpicking people to say like they need to look like this they need to look like this they need to look like this i'm saying you are beautiful exactly the way you are and i want to show you that yeah. so it's not it's not buying in into you know the ideal the media's ideal beauty it's it's really saying everyone is beautiful everyone has beauty in them and and how can i show that to you mm. that is so exciting <laughs> <laughs> it's very exciting if i so you mentioned before we, we i hit record you mentioned that you don't have any more workshops planned but if, Not yet. if someone is listening to this they could reach out to you yeah and, um um a boudoir session how do people reach you like if i wanted to book with you how would i reach you where is the best way to so you could check out my website which is rebeccasigala.com and i'll put and, a link below yeah and there's a, there's a contact form and my email is rebecca at rebeccasigala.com which is very simple mm -hmm. and i also um just like you have an amazing facebook group which i really love by the way i've been really really enjoying it and um I love the way you run it and all the conversations that are happening in there. It's really great for me. Um, so I, I also have a Facebook group that I started, I don't know, when I first, maybe a year after I first started boudoir photography. And it's like all like body, body positive um, inspiration and boudoir and people talking about, you know, how they feel about themselves and just a lot of amazing, positive, awesome things going on there. Um, you need to be, because it's a secret group, you need to be added by someone who is already in the group. Um, you can't just um, add yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you are interested, like feel free to find me, Rebecca Sigala on Facebook and send me a message and then we can become friends and I'll add you to the group. Um, or if you know someone who's already in the group, you could do it that way. And, and yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So if I, so if I get in touch with you and I, and I'm curious at a boot, about a boudoir and I want to, and I want to pursue it with you, we would, we would have a consultation first. 
so I send a like PDF with all the information. There's like four different packages. There's things that you can buy a la carte. Um, I have like a Q&A. So, you know, people who have questions that have been coming up a lot, that's also in the PDF. Um, right. and, then, and then we usually talk via email or have a short conversation on the phone if they need. But the consultation happens after we book a date. And then we kind of like delve into the fun, exciting details of it all. Wow. Wow. That's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> That's exciting. That is exciting. I just want to, I was just like, ladies, you should be doing this. We should all be doing this. This is something yeah. we should do for ourselves. I like the idea, Rebecca, of like capturing myself at this stage and stage of my life. Because I know, you know, I say in parenting, like I have, I redid my about page on my website and, and something I added was like, time is fleeting. Like time is fleeting. Like, we, you know, like it's just the fact of life. And um, of course, I'm talking about life with kids, but in general, like, I'm not going to look like this forever. Just like I don't look like the same as I did on my wedding day. And it's so amazing to look back at the photos of my wedding day and the emotions it invokes and it brings me back. What an amazing, you know, we take it for granted that we won't look like this for better yeah. or for worse. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to be this, I'm not going to look this way. I won't be this age forever. It's so yeah. funny. Because my grandma, like, even before I did boudoir photography, she'd send me, like, she'd send me birthday cards and then slip in a picture of her, like, in her bikini, bikini in the Bahamas when she was, like, 30 years old. And she's, like, me and your grandpa, 19-whatever, like, the date. And it was so, like, at first, I never understood it. I'm, like, oh, grandma. I mean, you're beautiful. Like, I always appreciated her beauty. She's gorgeous. Um, but now as a boudoir photographer, I completely understand and appreciate it. And I'm happy that I have those photos of her. Like, you know, it's something. I love your grandmother. <laughs> well, yeah, she's awesome. She yeah. Whoa. yeah she... Shout out to Booby. <laughs> I know. Exactly. Whoa. What a deep soul. Yeah. What love. She's she was really, like, conveying a deep message to you in those photos. Yeah. Was, like, hey, look at me at 30. It was Look, have t look at time. Look at, you know, time and value time. Whoa, and, you're wow. kidding me. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's really beautiful. I am going to start printing some photos of myself and shoving them into cards. <laughs> we all need to print pictures. That's yeah. what we need to do. Yes, we do. Oh, you dropped out. All right, I'm not sure. Oh, there you're back. Uh, okay. I don't know. I got it. Maybe you got a phone that call. Yeah, sometimes that happens. Okay, so all the ways that we can reach you. I, f I really think that I could sit and just um, passionately, in Australia, say like have a yarn, like just ha like chat about this because um, it really, it is something that, it really is evidently very deep. It's not just picture, you know, naked pictures. This isn't, this isn't Playboy. This is an experience. And this is an opportunity to experience myself in a deeper way through my body. And so it's all, it's multi-level that I get to see the beauty externally in myself and re, re, um, um, uh, reconnect with my external beauty and see myself in a new way. And, but through the process, um, reignite my uh, self-love internally. Yeah. And it's really goes on so many levels. And I think it's, I really want to encourage anybody who's watching and everyone who's watching that, um, this is something to consider. And I always, you know, I always think like, if you're not going to, do, if you don't want to do it, well, what's the reason there? And not to question it or to criticize it, but what's coming up for me that, what's scary for me? And, and it, not because I think that it's invalid, but I think it's valid that we, at least if it's not something that we want to pursue, it's something that we can at least encounter the part of myself that's scared and to, mm -hmm. and to um, um, connect with that part. So like I'm scared because I might, or this might happen, or that might happen, or the what ifs, and that's okay too. Just knowing what's holding me back is yes. um, is beneficial. And Rebecca, you're here, and you have an amazing Facebook group, and you're available through your contact form and email. I know that anyone who sends you an email, you're you know, you're <laughs> on it. Happily, and you can share those hesitations with Rebecca. Um, yeah. Or yeah. Hey, like I would love to hear those things. Like even if you're not. I'm doing a boudoir session you just have questions about it or feelings that come up that you want to share like I really 
I love talking to women and, you know, really understanding the psychology behind it because I think it's important and I want to just be able to provide like the safest environment for my clients and even like women in the group um, and be sensitive to everyone's uh, triggers, traumas or needs. Yeah. I think the group is an amazing place to share. You're there, first of all. And also you can connect with other women in those, in that resistance that sometimes, you know, it's just, it's just an, it's, I think it's an, a very um, beneficial and empowering thing to part of ourselves to explore even our resistance to the, to the experience. Of yeah. Um, yeah. Very interesting. Wonderful. Rebecca, I'm so glad that we had this conversation. Me too. I think the next step is I have to do a boudoir to really get the answers, like to really understand it. I have to do it. Yes. And I'm going to. <laughs> I did a therapy session of my own. That was, that was great. That was right. really right. special. Thank you. you thank really you for being so open. What? I said, thank you for being so like real and so open. And um, I really just like appreciate your time. This is really great. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I appreciate your, your time and your, uh, um, your time here and sharing um, and everything that you do, everything that you do and your commitment. I really value your um, commitment to women and to growth and to empowerment. I'm going to stop the recording. Don't go okay. anywhere. Okay. Thank you everyone for listening, for joining us and uh, check out the description below for all of those links. If you want to get in touch with Rebecca or with myself. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.